The topic is Chuing Dorje. Chuing Dorje is a, a famous Buddhist teacher of the 17th century. He is, uh, belongs to a famous incarnation lineage tradition, uh, the Karmapa of the, of the Karma Kagyu tradition, the Kamsangpa of Tibetan Buddhism. And he was also a very famous artist and uh, very highly promoted uh, by the Karmakagyu and mentioned uh, often in literature. So what's really interesting about Chuing Dorje's art is that it doesn't follow normal Tibetan painting traditions or sculpture. He, he was both a painter, uh, a metal caster, uh, making sculptures and also carving. We have examples of uh, carved rhinoceros horn and other other mediums that that are attributed to him. Now, not all the works can be clearly uh, um, said to be works of Chuing Dorje, although we do have some which have inscriptions, and the inscriptions we have to really admit. Um, all scholars admit that, that those clearly must be by Chuing Dorje. He had uh, uh, followers and he had people that made copies of his work afterwards. He made single paintings, he made a single sculpture, but he also made sets of paintings. And some of these um, sets still exist, like in the Lijiang Museum in Yunnan province in China. We have many examples of uh, Chuing Dorje works in uh, Palpo Monastery in in uh, Tibet, in the uh, uh, Sichuan uh, province of uh, China. And, uh, but you might also ask, why do we have so many works of, uh, of Chuing Dorje in, uh, in a province um, away from the home monastery of the Karmapa, which is uh, Tsurpu? Well, the answer to that is a lot of them were gifts to Situ Panchen, um, by the High Lamas of Tsurpu Monastery, and they were gifts given in the 18th century. So, so just a little bit of history as to how those works uh, ended up in, in uh, Palpo Monastery. So, Chuing Dorje painted in many different styles. He, he copied Chinese styles for sculpture. He copied Swat and Kashmir sculpture styles. Um, in, there is a catalog that came out after his passing, put together by one of the, the eminent scholars of the uh, Karmakagyu tradition, where they catalog all the known works of Chuing Dorje. And in there it also states that at times he would paint in a Menri tradition, at other times he would paint in different traditions. So he was very eclectic. He was interested in all types of art, and we have many, many examples in in monasteries, in museums, and in private collections around the world. So Chuing Dorje will continue to be a very uh, uh, important topic uh, with any discussion of uh, uh, Tibetan artists. So this is just an overview.